Welcome to Attican Plays Railway Empire. All right, hi, this is Attican, and welcome to another Railway Empire video. This is volume three of our Sharing Community Contribution series. And I've got a ton of stuff to cover, so I'm going to go, I want to get right on it. The first thing, and it's, a lot of these are going to be where I'm going to answer questions that I get more than once on the comments. In other words, I get a question asked of me a lot, so I thought I'd just put them in a video and answer them once and for all. So the first one is, how do I get access to the beta for Railway Empire? And this is true of anything. This is on Steam. I don't think this applies at all to um, console players, but for you PC players, particularly if you're using Steam, you would right click on your game in your library, you would hit properties, and then you would go up here where it says betas and then then here you would select what you want to to see now i could probably i think i can go back yeah i can go back if i want to to go back to the legacy build or opt out of all the beta if i go back to the legacy build that's just going to put me on the production schedule with everybody else if i pick the public beta which i have that keeps me up with whatever they've got out there as beta at this time and real quick for those of you who aren't who don't come from tech backgrounds like i do uh, production means it's what's out there for the public to buy so we're right now we're on version 1.7 of uh, as of 211 2019 we're on um, 1.7 version 1.7 that's in production alpha would be very early tests when things are rough beta is a little more advanced test testing when the code is getting closer to being done and public beta is when it's really close to done and they're actually turning it out to the public to play the game and do the testing for them it's a great way for the developers to save money get a lot of great feedback and allow us to see the games earlier so that's how you would get on the public beta branch and what will happen is if you do that if you go through properties and in beta and then kick collect that then it's going to um, going to load or update your software with the public uh, beta version and then whatever is the latest public beta that's what you will be running all the time all right so there's number one okay number two a lot of you ask me how do I get those contour lines and, and by contour lines i mean those lines that show up on your map or on your screen when you're doing track building for example and you're laying track and you see these lines and these lines run if they're real close together that means the elevation is changing very quickly if they're far apart that means the elevation is changing gradually it's very useful for telling where the mountains are what you need to go around all that good stuff so the way to get contour lines on your um machine again this is pc but i'm sure there's a similar thing for you console users go to options go to gameplay and then right here contour lines and set that to on you can turn it off or you can turn it on so so set contour lines to on and you will be able to see the contour lines or the elevation lines on your screen as you build track and place buildings all right, let's talk about point three here, which is um, kind of some subtle things to know about when you're reading your task list. The difference between produce and transport, and th these are the two that seem to tie people up, particularly produce. Produce means that I have to actually own whatever is producing that good. I have to have it um, upgraded or I have to own multiple of them so that I have them up to the required rate of production and i have to have trains at each of those producers readily available to load those produced goods in order to get them to count uh, so for example the best example i can think of that is on the black gold scenario there's a task to uh, do the, literally this produce 20 loads of oil per week i think it is uh, i believe that's the thing but it's, at any rate the idea is you have to do a lot of oil over a particular time period. So again, own, own the producer, upgrade it to the production you need, and make sure you've got trains there in order to carry it off. That's how you get credit for produce. Now, transport is pretty straightforward. It's just what it sounds like. Transport 40 units of cloth would mean we would have to load the goods, in this case the cloth, onto a train, deliver them to a city station or a warehouse, 
And in this example, you would need five full loads, assuming you're running eight box cars and you don't have special uh, cars on there. You would need five full loads to complete the task to transport 40 units of cloth. Let's uh, just cover how to do a bypass. And I know Jan Jansen wrote back a comment on how to do them. I've done them many, many times in videos and I've also messed them up multiple times. So let me just show you the simple process for, for creating a bypass. And what I mean by bypass is, for example, let's say we've got this line that goes from London to Toronto and then up here to Ottawa and it passes through Toronto. We would also like to have a line that goes around Toronto without going into that station, maybe a direct line between London and Ottawa, for example, or something else that we need. So how would we make that bypass? Very, very simple. We would go to that first line that you see here, the first piece of track. We would drag a line over to the other side, wherever we want to join in, like so. Now you can see we've got a nice straight line and then we're just going to take it here in the middle and scoot it over until it barely will pass. And we may have to manipulate because of that industry. There we go. Now we've got a bypass line that'll barely make it around and we want to make it make sure that it's not so close that we can't get another line inside it. So we give scoot it over just a hair more because what we're going to do now, we're going to accept this one. Then we're going to go grab our cone and click on the inside track, run it over like this, and put it on the cone on the other side. And there you see we've got a nice, uh, relatively straight, tight bypass that goes around Toronto once I hit the dollar sign. We can go in and do our signals, and by the way, I'll, I'll add this as a little bonus because this keeps getting asked to. I go into signal mode, and in order to do all those signals at once on a PC, uh, this is how you would do it. I hover over it. It automatically is going in the right direction. I hit Control, Shift, and left click, and it set all my signals. Then I put it on the other side, Control, Shift, left click there we go now we've got signal set for our bypass uh, we've got a line running there <laughs> it missed that one uh, occasionally it misses that first one I'm not sure why so now we've got our signal set you'll notice they're set right down to the end on both sides just the way you'd want them we've got a nice little bypass so that's how you would build a bypass bypass and by the way if I now set up a line between well let's just do it between London and Ottawa, for example. And it doesn't matter what kind of line it is or what we're doing. Let's just run a train, get it going. And now if we, if we once this thing starts running, well, it doesn't matter. We'll look at it. We'll look at its path. Now see, see what it did? It automatically took the bypass and didn't go into that station because that, that's a feature, a program programming feature uh, that uh, they've added. Now let us say that for some reason, well no, I'm going to, I'll give you another example in a minute about uh, how to set waypoints. We're going to cover waypoints when you want to force a line to go a certain way. That'll be the next thing we cover. But that's how you build a bypass around a city or around a station out in the country or, or whatever you need to bypass. All right. How many of you have had this problem where you using our new super stations, you know, the uh, like a large station with the automated signaling and you've got another one on the other end of your line. Maybe it's a warehouse or whatever. And so you've got your four parallel tracks and then you start watching them run. You got 10 trains running. They're all using these same two, the, the top two tracks. They're all running on these two tracks. Nobody's over here. Well, what's going on? Well, what's going on is it's coming out of the station, picking the, picking the shortest route uh, to go on, and it just keeps optimizing and keeps saying, okay, it's these two tracks, it's these two tracks. And you're, and you're getting frustrated saying, no, no, I want it to either share or I want to, what's more likely, I want two of these tracks to be my freight line and two more to be my passenger line. 
So how would we make that happen? Well, that's where waypoints come in. So we're going to talk about this particular problem and how to set waypoints. So let's say I set a line between Grand Rapids and Toledo, and I want it to be a passenger and mail only line because I want to, I want to get express trains. I want them to go as fast as I can. I don't want the freight, slower freight trains to slow them down. So what, what you would do in this case to make sure, let's say I wanted instead of running these two, notice how I pick these two over here. Let's say I wanted to make these two over here, this track and this track, my passenger lines. What you would do is start to set it up with your two locations, click on one of them and say, okay, when you come out of Grand Rapids, I want you to always hit that piece of track right there. Notice how its route has now changed. Now it's going out on this one and back on that one. And you could, that could, could be a legitimate setup like that. But now I want these two to be passengers. So now I'm going to click on Toledo. And then I'm going to say no. And now when you come out of Toledo, I want you to hit that piece of track right there. Now what we've told it is to always use these two tracks over here. And now we can run up. And now, of course, of course, I'm at 1830 with just grasshoppers. But now my little, uh, um, little, train my little passenger lines can run on these two tracks without ever running on these two and then i could do the same thing if i wanted to say say i wanted to run a freight line or maybe i had a pass-through warehouse over here and i was going to run freight up and back or what have you then i could do the same thing i could say okay let's set up a new line between grand rapids and toledo and you'll notice it automatically picked this. So if I wanted to, I could just stop right there because it, it likes these two. But if I wanted to be certain of that, I would say, okay, when you come out of Grand Rapids, I want you to run on that track. And when you come out of Toledo, I want you to run on that track. Now we've locked it in. We know that all the, any train that we put on there, that's where it's going to run. And furthermore, I can go out here and uh, copy this one. Let's just make, just be, let's, let's, let's make, make three or four copies of that train and and have them running and we'll notice our utilization after they get going here it's just going to be the one train that's running on the passenger mail because that's all we told it to do and then over here on our freight line we've got now we've got two here comes a, should be another one coming yep now we've got three and then we'll have four whatever you get the idea so you can use waypoints to control what pieces of track get used. All right, let's expand on what we just talked about and talk about, well, what if we did have a warehouse in here? And a lot of you have asked me, why is it that when I set up a warehouse, I will often leave the goods, here, let's set up, let's set up three, we got the logs that are already at, attached to it, and we'll have some wheat and corn. Of course, we'll have other items that we could move in there. But you've asked me, why don't I move this up to max? Well, the reason is very simple, traffic. I don't want a whole bunch of trains bringing a bunch of stuff in here that I'm not going to be using uh, for a long, long time. So what I tend to do is set it at 20, and then what I've been doing lately, and this is not necessarily, I won't say this is quote right, unquote, but it certainly works, is I've been running full trains, running them into the warehouse, and I'll typically, on that line, if I'm going to set the limit at 20, I will run three trains. Now, why three? Because two trains will be 16. It'll take 16 in there, and then they'll start coming back. And then as the goods are being taken away from the warehouse by the lines that would come through and grab goods for the cities, then uh, there's another train sitting here waiting to be loaded, which will then take a load in, and by the time it gets ready to go, we should have one back. And of course, you have to adapt that. If I had a big, long line where I was running something into that warehouse, maybe milk from way down here, perhaps I would need more trains in order to keep that flow going. You just need to figure that out. But I've been using this three, and see how we've got two going, and this one right here is only loaded four. That's because 20 is the total demand in that warehouse. And when these two, um, and, and we know, and it knows, it's pretty smart, it knows that you've got 16 on the way and you can only put 20 in there. In fact, I'll show you, if I were to bump that up to 30, watch what happens to this train here. See, now he's gonna go ahead and load up and now we've got 
um, 8 times 3 is 24, so we've got room for another one. And if we were to actually put another one, it would partially load, but then it'll just sit there and wait until there's room for uh, more goods in that warehouse. And then, as again, again, as I said, as trains come through and take goods out, the trains that we have stacked up in that line will start to uh, refill the warehouse. But back to the main point, I usually leave it at 20 because I don't want, whoops, I don't want trains coming in here unnecessarily, particularly if it's a busy type place. This is a nice big open area. It's easy to get these trains in and out, but some places they're really tight and you don't need a lot of traffic uh, coming in there and tying things up. So just leave them at 20. And if it's a more important item, for example, um, maybe the wheat, I might bump it up because I know I'm gonna have the beer thing going on. Both cities need wheat and I have the beer thing, so maybe I could bump that up a little bit. I haven't done any studies to say what's the best approach for that. But I can tell you that the basic idea of leaving it at 20 as a general rule works very well. Okay, now let's talk about the type of train that you want to run on your lines. And this one comes uh, some from Johnny Hughes, a little bit from Pechik. And Pechik, yes, I know I am totally mispronouncing your name, but that's, your, that's my name for you. Because I like the name, it's a good hillbilly name, and I can say it. Uh, so Pechik and Johnny Hughes contributed this, and I've talked about this in other videos a little bit, but let's go through it just right here. We've got, we're in the 1850s here, so that means we've got different trains. We start out with the Philadelphia. It is a freight train. It is designed to haul freight. Now, can it haul passengers? Absolutely. Can it be an effective passenger line with um, express status, absolutely, provided it's the fastest thing out there at that point in time. So we've got the Philadelphia, we've got our next bump up is the Dragon. Now why is the Dragon a better freight train than the Philadelphia? Well, well, first of all, of course, the Dragon's faster, but the speed is not the important thing with freight. The really important thing is tractive power. Now the acceleration and the maintenance requirements, consumption, all those things matter. But the two that I look at are the speed and the tractive power, and particularly for freight, the tractive power, because we, if you have a situation like uh, the gold rush, or not gold, yeah, gold rush, the one out there in San Sacramento and San Francisco and Carson City, the, the Dragon will do much better on that, those hilly um, track you have to lay than the one you start out with, which is the Philadelphia. Although the Philadelphia is a great little train, 56% tractive, the Dragon is 70, so it's just be a little faster and better power. It's gonna handle the heavy load of freight. Now, you also have trains that are called Express. Their suitability is called Express. Now, this Rensselaer happens to be the first one that comes along. In fact, actually, I think it's the first one, yes, that comes along in, in our whole set. Um, the Rensselaer comes along as an express train, and it has a higher speed, it has a higher passenger rating, passengers like it, which is going to help you get more uh, passengers, and it's meant to be an express train. So this one would be ideal for passenger and mail lines. It would be very poor, relatively poor, if you tried to haul freight with it. You could, but that tractive power uh, just wouldn't get it. It would, it would struggle to um, get going when it had a heavy load. Then you look at, here we go with an upgrade. The Rogers American is an upgrade of the express train, high traffic, high passenger rating, good speed for this uh, 1850s time period. So an excellent train for passengers, that, but there's another Rogers, the Mogul, which is mixed. That's the third one. You can have freight, you can have passenger, you can have mixed. Now a mixed means that just that, it was kind of designed to be either a passenger train or a freight train, or to handle loads that are both freight and passenger, like the automatic lines that we sometimes set up on uh, uh, some of our routes. So um, what you want to do here though, the key thing is make sure that you've got the right train for the right job. Because again, if I go back to say this Rensselaer and I try to run uh, freight across the across the mountains from Sacramento or 
well, yeah, Sacramento to Carson City, for example, going over those mountains, it is going to struggle, it's going to crawl, whereas if I run the Dragon, it's going to do much better, and if I run the Rogers Mogul, because, again, higher speed, little, does it have higher tractive power or no? Interesting. This, this is a good case where the Dragon would actually be best if you had a really mountainous line, line, L-I-N-E, and the Rogers Mogul would be better because of the speed if you had it a little bit flatter land. So you could start looking at that and saying, okay, I want to run the Rogers Mogul uh, for that kind of case. So the point is, get the right one. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is how do you replace them? Because this is a something that we've been doing a lot here lately because of the idea of Pechica. There we go. Look at all those triangles. I, I'm in a, I need to replace all these trains. Well, I've got trains running. I've got trains running on um, passenger lines. I've got trains running and carrying freight. So right now, I think I'm at the point in this particular save where I'm running the Mogul and I'm running uh, the Rogers American. So all my passenger lines are express suitability and all my freight lines are mixed suitability. So here's the thing about the engine shed that I finally figured out. Okay, if I want to replace all my trains, so let's say I wanted to, to um, go in and replace all those mixed trains. I can go in here and say, whoops, yeah, yeah, replace trains, suitability, mixed, and what it's doing is saying I've got 82 trains out there that are the mixed, in this case the Rogers Mogul. Do you want to replace them all with Rogers Mogul again? Sure. Then I could go to my Rogers American and say and replace all and say, okay, now I've got suitability of Express. I've got Express trains running. I've got 42 of them running. Replace all of those. Now, the other way you can do the replacement is, let us say that we had all these, let's replace all of our trains with the Rogers American, which is an express train. Now, we've got the Rogers American running every, every train on our line, which would include our freight trains. But then we said, oh, man, that's no good. We don't want that. We want this train, the Rogers Mogul, to, to handle our freight. So then we could look at it not from the suitability point of view, but from the route properties and say, okay, go out there and get all the ones that are connected to rural businesses or freight only. So let's get all the ones that are connected with rural businesses. And let's see if we had some, have some more that are freight only. Six trains that are set up as freight only We'll run those, and now we should be running Rogers Moguls on all of our freight lines, and we should be running the Rogers American on all of our express lines. Let's see if we got rid of all our triangles. Yeah, there we go. And all those triangles went away, and everybody's happy again. All right, so you've probably heard me say many times, debt is your friend in this game, and it is. But there is one thing that I've been doing, which is really a sloppy habit of mine, that um, Radio Prozix actually pointed out, that you could squeeze some extra money. Now, I'm, this, this particular save is way down. In fact, this is the end of a uh, perfect playthrough of, uh, what is that, the cattle drive. But um, even at the beginning, it's the same thing. In fact, it's more important even at the beginning. But let us say I needed to open up a bond. I can go into my company go over to finances and or banking activities and open up a bond. Well, what you've probably seen me do is something like this. I would go oh, issue, issue, get all the debt I could get, and then I would run out there and start doing stuff with the track. That is lazy. That's just me. That's me being lazy. Here's what you want to do. What you want to do, <laughs> well, let's just go back and repay those. My banker is going to think I'm crazy, but let's repay those. What you want to do, as Radio Prozix points out, is as soon as you need the money, you want to open one bond. Then you want to take the money from that bond and spend it and build up the company value 
so that when you come back in and open your next bond, it'll be based on a larger company value and the second bond will be larger. So keep that in mind that you just want to open up one bond, use it, then go grab your second one. And what you can always do, of course, if you're tight on money, is just keep going back and checking to see if you have one available to open up or or if you could close one to open a bigger one or anytime you've got the plus just grab it uh, and go with the, go with a new bond this next one is submitted by anita agrawal and anita uh, pointed out and this she saw this when i was playing the vulture and this is a the save from the end of the the uh, pursuit of perfection uh, vulture and um when you have a complex situation like this where you've got a lot of track coming in all together one of the things you could do rather than having all the merges and this has worked out well I but remember I struggled with this one a little bit uh, during the actual playthrough and um, it's working just fine now but one of the ways to address this is to use a maintenance station so uh, I'll come right back and show you what I mean all right, so all we have to do now is kind of insert this maintenance station in at the key area. And then what we can do is take each of the pieces of track and tie them into um, the maintenance station, like so and like so. And we could run this one in and merge it with this, or in the case of like this one right here, we're gonna just lead it back a little ways and we can instead of having it merge we can just have it go into the uh, maintenance station like so and like so and I'll come back and show you the finished product all right so here's here's what we ended up with this maintenance station now supplies us with these nice junctions here and nice junctions here so that all these lines can come into it and just kind of get automatically routed back to wherever they need to go to complete their route. So it makes a really nice um, clean junction, not to mention if you wanted to, you could change these lines and add that station on there if you wanted them to be serviced uh, as part of, part of their little trip. But see how it handles, it handles very nicely all this traffic coming through here and keeps everything moving. And now I'm going to show you an alternative to that. All right, now here's the less expensive version of that, which also takes up less space. If you think about the maintenance station, let me just put one out here to show you what I mean. The maintenance station or any of the uh, automated signal uh, stations, what they give you is this, the fancy junction, and they give you the, the, the signaling box where, where the guy sits and tells the trains where to go. But um, the real key is this fancy little piece of track right here, which allows the trains literally to go from any of these uh, places over here to any of these places here. Well, we can replicate that exact same thing by just simply putting a couple of diamonds and then, then putting a diamond in the middle and then two more diamonds on the other end and look at that, these trains are running. Notice that one went all the way across. He came in through here and went all the way across down to that one. And so you can do the same thing. If you don't wanna, if you wanna, um, don't wanna go to the trouble of building that yourself, just go ahead and put in a maintenance station, but it doesn't have to be a maintenance station, by the way. It could be a, um, well, any four tracker would do nicely. In fact, the new trains, uh, a new, um, Warehouse. Where's the regular warehouse? Here we go. The regular warehouse would get the would get the job done because it's giving you the ability to use all four lanes on either side. And then of course you could, if you didn't like that, if you wanted to run a little faster, you could expand it out and have it be the four tracker. But you don't need all that. You just really need, you don't need all this, you don't need all this. You just, what you really need are these switches right here. And so let me just show you quickly, because that, that, those aren't easy to build. Let me show you a couple of things about that. First of all, 
make sure that your lines literally are touching each other. They can't look like they're touching each other. They have to be running exactly in parallel. And the way to test for that is to take a supply tower and then just slide it along the area where you want to build your switches. And as long as you see the green, that means that they're all close together because if they were the least bit separated, like out here, I mean, even a tiny bit, you would get the red because the supply tower wouldn't be able to cross all the tracks. All right, so how do we build this thing? You basically just take go into track mode, you get at your starting point, you make the beginning of the X. Make it as small as you can make it. You can make it longer, it really doesn't matter, but small X right here. Then go over to your other two at the same place, parallel, and put an X on that side. Then where that X ends, you go to the middle two tracks and put an X across the middle two tracks if you can. There we go. And then where that ends, you go and make another X, another pair of X's on the outs outside tracks. like so and there you have now we actually have two sets of those fancy fancy uh, tracks but notice how our, our lines these line this line didn't ex actually have to merge with this one and this one this one actually did but this one came in clean to these two this one came into these two so really anytime you've got uh, parallel sets of double tracks running like that you can just use these fancy things. See that one going over? See this one uh, using this one to go over and come in through there? And notice they're running just great. And you could run a fair amount of traffic through here. And we've got overkill. We've got two sets of them. But uh, um, at any rate, that's a good way to do a complex merge. Either, either put in a maintenance station or a warehouse or whatever you like. Uh, something you can build out in the middle of nowhere, which is basically just that, a maintenance station or a warehouse. Or do your, or just take take this piece of it and duplicate it as best you can on the track. All right, so that wraps up volume three of sharing community contributions. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you've uh, found something useful in there. And I really want to say thanks to everyone who contributed, and thanks to all of you for the tremendous support for the channel and for all the contributions you make to help all of us become better players. Now, I want to close with just kind of a, a question for you. I need another game. Uh, I, you know, there's only so much Railway Empire you can play in your life, and, and I've got so many hours of videos out there. Um, I really feel like the game's been covered to death. There are some other things I could do with Railway Empire. I've got some ideas for some other things. Uh, some of you have asked for quarterly profit. I could go through that and how to understand the financial statements. Uh, there, there's still some open issues in our minds about express lines and how they're they're one. There, there's a couple. There's some more good stuff that I haven't really finished all the community community contributions. There's probably one more video worth still out there in the comments that I haven't uh, even put on uh, video yet. Uh, but having said all that, I just personally need another game. In fact, the reason there's been about a two-week uh, delay between this video and the one I did prior is I, I just quit. I, I said I can't do this anymore. I, I've been playing, actually I've been playing Tropico 3, which is absolutely one of my favorite games. But it's a bit dated. I don't know if anybody wants to see videos on it, but it's, it's pretty awesome. I love that game. But... Um, Having said all that, I really need another game. Could you help me out? Let me know what you think would be a, a good fit or something you would like to see on the channel that you would enjoy seeing. So um, again, thanks for all your help, all your contributions, and I hope this one was a good one for you. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player, and I hope you'll join us for our next Railway Empire video. Thank you.